the role of executor means when an executor signs an instrument. And so let's look at the opening description. A warrant is a form of writ signed. So it's a form of writ signed and issued by a competent executive authority to one or more agents commanding certain acts to be performed whilst granting the agents limited protection from liability, limited liability, or responsibility for any injury or claim against them that may occur as a result of the execution of the commanded acts. So here is the key. A warrant must be signed. The signature is the underwriting. A warrant is an indemnity order from an executor. That is what a warrant is. Now we go further into the description of what is a invalid warrant under 3180. A warrant has no authority, validity or effect. And this is Roman law. This is Roman law. Has no validity or effect if the man or woman who issued the warrant has no legitimate authority in the court. In other words, if the person who signs it is an executor to son tort, they have no authority. Two, if the official who issued the warrant did not sign it, an unsigned document claiming to be a warrant cannot be a warrant. Without the signature, there is no indemnity. If there is no indemnity, it is not a warrant. It isn't a warrant. And if someone then acts on that document, unsigned, and they injure you, then they have no indemnity for you. You are free to go and pursue them criminally. If someone comes to your home and breaks in and they have an unsigned piece of paper, then they are a criminal, whether they're holding a badge or not, and you can pursue them. Three, the competent authority who issued the warrant dies or leaves office. Four, no act or acts are specified within the warrant. Five, no expiry date. You can't have an indemnity without an expiry date. And six, the act uh, or acts specified within the, within the warrant exceed the authority of one who issued it. Now, I am very aware that it's one thing to talk about warrants with such seeming clarity, and it's another thing when a SWAT team arrives at your doorstep and bashes down the door with high-powered weapons. Now, whether people come to your door as a SWAT team or whether two police come, whether a sheriff comes, whatever it is, at some point in the proceedings, either at the beginning or at the end, when all the fear has settled, when everything's settled down, a man or a woman will appear with that document and claim that they are executing a warrant and there will be a dialogue. And that dialogue will be to validate the warrant. Now, you can't stop a SWAT team bashing down your door. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. And I'd suggest to anyone, if uh, if they find that there is a group of people at the front saying police and they've got high-powered weapons, not to resist and certainly not to try and defend yourself, to obviously mitigate as much as possible any uh, inferred threat. Because when things settle down, that dialogue will happen. And it's at that point that you are able to challenge the basis of the warrant. Where's the signature? Oh, it's a warrant. Where's the signature? You've broken into my home and you claim this is a warrant. This isn't a warrant. This is a piece of paper. What's your name? I'm going to hold each and every one of you accountable for the damage to my property. You have no indemnity because you don't have an effective warrant. And I'll be making this clear before the judge when you take before the judge. And I'll be seeking damages. Well, look, at I'm giving you hypotheticals here. The key point about warrants is this. Know what an effective warrant is 
know what a defective warrant is. Know the difference so that the biggest effect of warrants, which is fear, can be addressed. Now, over time, part of what we're going to be doing is helping you as general executors learn how best to administer yourself in honour, respect, without revenge, without retribution, but to handle yourself in a way that an executor should handle themselves. And it will include how to follow up with what I've just described with warrants. But the point I wanted to make tonight when we spoke about warrants was this key thing, that a warrant is issued by a as someone who is presuming the role or assuming the role of being an executor, and if it is not signed, then it is not a valid warrant in their system. Now, in the uh, time that's uh, available before we wrap up for questions, let me just cover a couple of things I said we'd do. I want to talk to you about the package to run because that was an area I know a number of you uh, asked and I want to cover that now. The package to Rome, which is supposed to have gone out on the 15th of August, which hasn't, but is dated for the 15th of August, was a package that originally was going to go to the Bank for International Settlement. And it follows the package that went out from a number of you with much gratitude in June, on the 12th of June. Now, the package to the Bank for International Settlement, which, which was proposed, was looking at addressing the second major trust, master trust of the Roman cult, called Attorney Regis, which means eternal crown, and is the primary legal document that created the concept of the crown, or the crown company, or the king of Spain, or the a crown of Aragon or the crown of England, the crown corporation that still functions behind the scenes in Australia, Canada, and indeed in the United States. Now, this is the second trust after the first being Pontifex Romanus. And in, the, um, in June, when we wrote the writ of probate and the writ of mandamus to the three popes, that trust was dissolved. Well, what we've done, and this is now up on the uh, University of Acadia, is the Word documents for these, as well as the PDFs. We have simplified it. So effectively, the package that is being sent, and I, I still hope those that were willing to put their name and their thumbprint to it to the north, to the south, to the west and to the east are still willing to follow through. But to allow you to download those, they are on the University of Acadia. And it is a writ, a writus probatum regnum, and again, a writ of mandamus, and again, the live-born record of Benedict. And we aren't going to write now to the Bank for International Settlement because of the work that we've done on settlement certificates, why on earth would we want to validate their system based on the presumptions that we're all slaves? Far from it. What we want to do is we want to ensure that the authority issued to the Bank for International Settlement is withdrawn. We want to make sure that authority, which is the authority of the treasurer, the Rothschilds, it's withdrawn, dissolved, negated, null, voided, ended, finished, over. And that is the purpose of the package. So it took some time, and of course we've run past the time that I'd hoped we'd have it in, in place, and, and I'm sorry that it's taken a bit longer than expected, but I hope those that had the intention to help still have that intention and will go to University of Eucadia and download those documents. And the last housekeeping matter was the websites from last week. And as I said, that list should be up on the University of Decatur. You can go and see those websites. 
So before we get to the questions, let me just do a summary for tonight. I don't, and Eukadia doesn't claim to be the sole source of all knowledge. How could we be? That is not the purpose and not the claim. But whenever knowledge comes to us, whenever inspiration comes to us, I made a promise, and it is embedded in everything we've done, that we will share without condition that knowledge to you. And that everything we are doing is to prove that this is the time to stand. This is a time that we will be free and that we will take back responsibility and competency for our own affairs. I hope and pray that to all of you that you will continue to read the material that is on the sites, that you will provide your feedback and where you find things that you do not agree with, that you will help us improve the information and correct it. But above all, that not only will you take charge of your own affairs, but you will help those that you know. And I thank you again for listening tonight. I look forward to your questions. Thanks very much. All right, wonderful, Frank. Thank you so much for sharing with uh, everyone tonight. And uh, I'm going to go back to an earlier question, and we sort of answered it, but I think we may want to cover it just a little bit because we've had a discussion going on in the chat about recording and registering and if there's a difference. And uh, so first question was, how does one get the will recorded and dated properly? Yeah, good question. And and this is what I, I, I mentioned in terms of the role of the town clerk. In some places, there isn't a town clerk. In Canada, I've been made aware that that, that is not a role necessarily that exists. But it, it is the role you're looking for is the um, the district uh, registrar of the court of public record, which is usually the same role as the uh, clerk of the guardians, the clerk of the magistrates, the head clerk, um, and the clerk of the peace because that role is the uh, primary role that feeds into the system uh, all the deeds and registrations. So in the States, it'll be the county clerk. Uh, in Australia, it'll be the council clerk. In uh, Canada, it may be the provincial clerk or the city clerk. Uh, it'll vary in, in, in England, it'll probably be the, bor the borough clerk, uh, council clerk. So it's going to vary slightly, and I want to make sure we have the information available on the uh, sites to help those know where to go. But it, it's all public knowledge. This is not hidden. This is not a, a hidden part of their system. Um, their system is very well oiled in the recording of deeds. It's just that they withhold them until the flesh is dead. Right. So uh, what folks are asking, so mainly at the county or province level, well, but one of the main things being asked is uh, the confusion or maybe the um, some of early on studies or uh, Patriot or Truth Movement speaking of the differences between recording and registering, why you should or shouldn't do either. Um, is it asking permission? Uh, no, any of that? No, look. And, and I appreciate this because I was having some discussions yesterday on, on, on similar sorts of things. Right. Look, um, they're, they're, look, people will say, well, I'm going to do it as a private. I want to do it on the private side. Let, let, let's let's cut, cut to the chase. In their system, they are making a set of public presumptions that we are intestate, that we have no will, that we are a trustee and that the rules of the administration of our estate is the public statutes. Yeah, that's the key presumptions they're making, right? The mechanism for us to rebut those presumptions turns out to be the recording or the registering of our deed, the executing of it uh, in their system at the appropriate level for the recording of deeds. Now, one might say this is putting us back into the system.